Hello and welcome to my channel Making Crafts. Today I'm back with my slimline journal and this one I am keeping a botanical nature type theme for it and this is the first slimline that I made. I was just inspired by um, Rachel from Roxy Creations when she created her document journal. So I wanted to give it a try but with book pages. So that's what I have done here. So I've got the signatures sewed in and I glued the signatures in. I did, you can see the previous video how I added the signatures to my cover, but when I did, when I added the signatures and added this piece of fabric, you can see the glue through it. But I left off last time trying to figure out how to cover and we decided that we would use this as a pocket or tuck spot on the inside cover. So that's what I wanna do first, is I want to just get started with the pocket and then we'll work our way through the journal. So I think this one will make a good tuck spot because it is a wide piece of lace and so I can add a really tall piece of paper in here or um, some sort of journaling spot, a journaling card. It'll have to be a tall, thin journaling card if I add that. So I'm just using my Fabri-Tac to add the pocket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add glue to the top, bottom, and then the um, back side so that it does stay down really sturdy and that it is a pocket so it closes it up. And I think most of the laces I'm using today, um, I'll tell you if some of them aren't, but I think most of the laces that I'm using are from um, an Etsy shop. I think it's Neri's. I'll have to look up the name of it and I'll just link it below. I ordered from her years ago when she was on a different venue, but I think that venue shut down. So she is now on Etsy, so I will link to that. So we have our tuck spots. So now for the back, this little piece is just not quite long enough. So I'm gonna have to do something different on the back. So we'll come back to that. I think I wanna start out at the beginning of the book and work my way through. And I may jump around some, but I'm kinda of just gonna work my way through the journal. And so what I've done is I have a box full of laces that are not a lot of yardage. It's bits and pieces left over that I've used before. So that's what I've pulled out today to see if I can use some of that up in this journal. Since this journal is from, you know, book pages and different things, I thought it'd be neat to use up some of my um, scrap fabric and laces. And so I'm just going to add this one as like a belly band, but instead of going up and down, it's going to go across. And I think it'll be a good little spot to tuck some writing pages in. Since it is book pages, there's not a lot of blank space for writing. So I wanna be sure to add pockets and belly bands and different things so that I can add um, some ways to write. And then whoever gets this journal, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or sell it or what I'm gonna do with it, but um, whoever uses this journal, then if they wanna use it as a writing journal, I wanna be sure that there's a lot of um, way, places to write. But this would also make a good journal just to use as an, kind of like a art journal, I call it like a decoupage journal or a, uh, not decoupage, excuse me, collage, I like to make collage scenes and different things since there is some good background pages. So whoever used it, they could take all the writing papers out and then just decorate the pages. And so I'm just gonna go through and just try out different bits and pieces that I have in this box and see how they look. And so I have this ruffle that I made. It was just a leftover piece from some ruffle that I had that I might add. And then I have this book page that um, had been torn out for another journal and I didn't use it. So I'm just going to tear it in half and I'm gonna use it as a pocket. And I'm just gonna add it as a pocket to this page. And then I'll have two pockets. But I think if I add two pockets to this one page, it's just not really going to um, be enough room. So I'm just gonna add the one. So I'm just gonna fold this over so that it will fit the page. I'm not gonna worry about bringing out my trimmer to trim it down. And really, I don't have a lot in mind when I got started on this journal. I just, um, well, I had a lot in mind when I first originally started the journal, but then when I took the large break, as you'll hear in the video before this one, I took a two or three week break from crafting and from working on this journal. Um, we had some things going on, and so I just couldn't get around to crafting. So when I came back, I was trying to get my crafting mojo back, and so that's why I'm doing a voiceover for this video. 
but in the next video I, I should just be chatting and crafting and that's what I prefer to do is just to talk with you guys and hang out with you guys when I'm crafting but when I started back with this journal I just really needed to get my crafting groove back so I thought it would be best if I just worked on the journal and um, come back and just you know did a voiceover for this one but my preferred method is just to craft and chat but I didn't want you to miss out on this journal because I think it's a lot of fun and I'm hoping that you know like Rachel's inspired me maybe this one will inspire you a totally different idea it doesn't even have to be the same but maybe it will spark some sort of creative idea in you to create something or just if you do the same exact thing that I'm doing I know it can't match because of we have different book pages but if you pull out some old book pages that you have and just pull you a journal together then um, I think that would be great that's always my hope that I inspire you to create something to in, because I think crafting is really great therapy and I also think that crafting um, it's just something to do good for yourself if you enjoy crafting it's fun to take time to do that it's great to take time for it because it is good for your um, your mentality you know for me if I complete a craft project then I feel like I just am a lot happier and um, I don't know what it is for me but especially filming if I can get to filming and crafting I'm happier than when I'm not filming and crafting so I've decided that I'm going to add the other half of the page as a pocket to the opposite side of the book so this is the same music sheet but on the opposite end of the book so I know I said I wasn't going to work back and forth but sometimes it just works out to do that so that I don't lose this pocket I was afraid that in all the piles of pieces on my desk because I pulled out tons of books tons of scrap laces and fabrics and then bits and pieces for this journal so my desk is covered and so while I have it in hand and I know where it's at, I figured I should just go ahead and add it to the journal. And I really love these book pages. This is from a Wildflower Field Guide, and I can't remember the name of it now, but it has some gorgeous pages in it. Let me look over here and see if I see it. It may be still laying on my desk. This one is from the Peterson and McKinney version, but I'm not totally sure. I'll have to look that up, and maybe I can tell you in one of the next videos that I film. But I just, when I go to the bookstore, I love to find field guides. And this is a different one. This is a wildflower field guide as well. It's just shorter and um, wider pages, and I like that too. And so what I've decided is this page here I really don't like in my book but I wanted to add it because I love the other side of the page so what I've done is I want and so this one I don't know if you can tell but it's a zoomed up um, image of some sort of bug so I want to cover that up so what I've done is I'm just going to take these book pages and I'm going to create little pockets by just folding the pages up I'm not worrying about measuring or um, anything like that I'm just going to fold the pages up and trim them down to fit this page so what I found with this I had, that page was just laying on my desk and I loved how the flowers were right in the middle so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to go through my field guide and see if I can find some book pages where the photo or the picture the drawing of the flower is right in the middle so like this one you've got the writing on top and bottom but the flower goes across the middle so I think that's gonna work best for these pockets but as I flip through it, I realized that there's not a lot of photos like that. But thankfully, I do come across enough to do three pockets, and that's the perfect size to cover this page. And this is an absolutely gorgeous book. It has so many flowers in it. And so I use this one, sometimes I use the page, or sometimes I just tear out the flower and cut around it or tear around the flower. But this, is, this book has tons of flowers in it. It's perfect for um, junk journaling and, and journal cards and different things like that and tags. So there weren't a lot of choices in the book with the, the flowers right across the middle and words on top and bottom, but I did find one last page. So I really felt like this one needed three pockets to fill up the page. And so thankfully they all have pinks and yellows in them so they go together really well. 
So what I'm gonna do is I like the size of the first pocket that I created, so I'm just going to use that pocket to help with the size of all the other pockets. So they're probably not exactly the same size, but they're close enough that I think it'll be just fine. So I'm just gonna fold them over, once again, just like I did the first one, and then when, you, when I glue it, I'll only glue one end, and then it'll have a side pocket on the side, and you'll see in a moment how I do that. I am going to pull out my trimmer just to trim down the ends on these because where I tore them out of the book there were ragged edges and I realized that that's where I'm going to be putting the tags or that's going to be the opening to the pocket and so I felt like it would be hard to get things in and out and it may rip the pocket by having the rough edges so I do pull out my trimmer just to trim those down straight and smooth. Now that I have all three pockets made, I realize I probably should make sure they're going to fit on the page and um, look good on the page, and they do. I am just going to space them evenly apart, just eyeballing it, not measuring, and I think they're going to work really good. So now I just want to add a little um, half circle. I'm not even sure what to call this, like a little thumb spot so that you can see that it is a pocket and that there's something in it, and I'm okay that it clips into the flower. And so I'm just going to do that for all three of them. And then we will glue them shut. So to glue these, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on one of the flaps on the back. And then I'm going to add glue along the bottom edge. So for this one, I just added along the flap. And then I'm going to um, reach in and glue just the bottom edge shut. So for the next one, I do just add glue to the bottom. It's a lot easier this way. Just add glue to the bottom and then fold it over and add glue to one of the flaps. We're also going to be gluing the back side of the um, pocket down. So you don't have to add a lot of glue to the flaps. It will stay shut once you glue it down. I'm just running a thin little line of glue along the bottom and then one of the flaps. So now that I have these done, I'm just going to add them to the page and I'm just going to add glue to the backs of them and I'm just going to center them up on the page so that there's a even space between each one. I think that this covers up this bug insect that was zoomed in on and you can't tell that it's behind there now and the page is really pretty. I love the flowers on it. And so to add these to the page, I'm just going to add glue to the backs of these. So the the actual envelope pocket is not going to have a pocket on the back. I'm just going to glue it down. It's just going to be a pocket itself, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do the same thing to all three. And so I know that this was a very short video, but I'm going to stop here today, and then I will be back in the next video, and I will come back and we'll start adding more um, pockets and more lace and different things to this journal. And so I, this will be a s several part series and I'll try to put part one, part two, part three, and I'll try to link in the description below the playlist for this um, series. So if you're watching these after the videos have come out and you're not watching them daily, then if you'll look in the description, you should see the playlist and you'll be able to see all the videos in this series. Now, if you're watching these as they come out, You'll just have to wait till the next day for the next one. I'm going to try to upload these either every day for one week or every other day, and it may take more than one week. We'll just see how it goes. But the link to the playlist will be in the description so you can see the whole series because I know myself when I'm watching a series, if I can't find part two and part three, it's kind of, you know, it kind of gets frustrating trying to find it. So I'll try to fix it so you can easily find it. Well, I hope that you are enjoying watching me create this journal, and here is how the pockets will work. We'll have to make some little tags or something for them. So I hope that you have enjoyed this series so far and that you will follow along with me and come back and check out the next video. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.